Hello my friends, my name is Jessie and I'm an environmental educator in Tucson, Arizona. So I'm here to give you some ideas of fun science things you can do at home as long as there's no school. And I brought my lovely assistant Penny here to help me out with these things. So I plan to make a series of videos. Some will be activities, some will be, oh thank you for your input Penny. Some will be activities, some will be just sort of informational videos where I tell you cool stuff or shout fun science facts at you because that's a thing I like to do. Um, and if you have anything you'd like to see or any requests, just let me know down below and I'd be happy to do what I can. So in the meantime, let's get started. So today, Penny and I, but mostly me, will be showing you how to make a magnifying glass out of stuff you probably have around your house. So what you'll need today are a plastic cup. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Mine happens to match my nail polish, which was a happy accident. Um, you will need some plastic wrap and you will need a rubber band, okay? Uh, it would be also nice to have probably a grown up aligned person around to do the cutting parts because there will be a cutting portion of this and I don't want you getting hurt. Um, so before we get into the actual making of the thing, let's talk about how it works and why it's important. You can probably think of lots of reasons that you would want to see something bigger than it actually is in real life. Binoculars are a good way to do that. Another one is by using any kind of magnifying thing, like for instance this is called a loop, or you could have one of those big magnifying glasses like Sherlock Holmes does or that you've probably seen in cartoons that like goes over your whole eye and makes your eye giant. Unfortunately I don't have one of those to show you. So in order to understand how we can make things look bigger than they actually are, it's important to understand how we can see them in the first place. So if we're trying to look at an object, for instance, this pen, Penny, do you see it? For instance, this pen that Penny's looking at right now, um, what's happening is light is bouncing off this pen and pff, going directly into our eyeballs. So think of it as a straight line. The light is reflecting from, for me, I have the ceiling light. I have some outside light from the window. Light is coming off of those and reflecting off this pen, bouncing straight to my eyeballs. And so what happens is um, my eyes are then forming a picture of the pen in the back of my eye, um, a place called the retina. And it's sending that message back to my brain that says, hey, that's a pen, I think. Got it? So then what happens when we add something to that equation? So instead of looking directly at that pen, what if instead I view it through something clear? Okay. Um, and so this is what we call a lens. Any kind of clear object that gets in between the object and your eyeball is changing that <laughs> direct uh, reflection of the image into your eyeball. And so when this clear object, this lens, gets in between the thing you're trying to look at and your eyeball, what happens is instead of making a straight line, just <laughs> that light gets bent. It gets kinked a little bit as it enters the clear object and as it leaves it. And so what's important to know, I, I promise we're going to get to the fun part in a sec, what's important to know is that the shape of the lens, not this shape like a circle, but the shape of it this way, is what matters in what the object eventually looks like. And so we're going to try and make one bigger. Um, so I'm going to use my high-tech board here and show you two different shapes. So one is called a convex shape. And what that looks like is it's kind of bowed out on the ends like that. So if you were to look at this lens very close up, you'd see that on end it actually bows out to the sides. The opposite of that is what's called concave. And so that looks like this. Forgive my drawing skills. Um, concave. And so I remember that one because it looks like it's caved in on the sides. So a convex lens, this fat one like this, what happens is the light enters it and it goes kink, kink as it exits it. And the object on the other side appears much bigger than what it really is in real life. The concave one on the other hand, uh, the light enters it and bends and makes the object look smaller. So that's the science. Let's do the fun part. So I want you to take your plastic cup. Mine is kind of sturdier than I intended it to be, um, but honestly, whatever you have lying around is probably fine. Um, 
For the next step, this is where you need the grown up aligned person. So you're going to cut out a hole along the bottom here that's big enough to fit whatever kind of things you're looking to magnify. Um, using some television magic, I have already done this, ta-da! Uh, so what the things that I'd like to, to embiggen, as they say, that's a scientific term, are some nature treasures that I have lying around. I love nature, I like to collect stuff outside all the time, uh, and maybe you do that too, maybe you have a rock collection, maybe you have the chance to go outside and gather things from your yard, or maybe you just have stuff laying around your house that you wanna make look bigger. Um, some ideas might be some newspaper print, or if you have any kind of like a feather lying around, those look real cool magnified, or really anything. Just see what you can come up with. Um, so some things that I'd like to see look bigger are, for instance, uh, I have this cool fossil. It's called a brachiopod, and so I found it in Indiana one time. It's pretty cool. I also have this praying mantis egg case. It's called an uthika. That's a really great word. Um, and so what that is, is the praying mantid just like she kind of squirts out, the female squirts out kind of this like foamy mass and then lays her eggs inside of it. Uh, and then it hardens into this cool thing and it has neat designs and I like to look at it. And one other thing I have is, <laughs> this is a um, an insect that lives here in Arizona. It's called, oh wait, my na nail's in the way. It's called a fig beetle. Look at it, look at it. Uh, and it's really shiny. Its belly is all iridescent. This one's not alive. I'm really sorry. Um, I found it that way. Um, and so I would like to magnify these nature treasures that I found. So I have cut the slit on my cup big enough to fit them. Okay. Step one. Step two, you are going to get some plastic wrap. Look, I've made another lens. It's amazing. Rip it off. Make it so it fits your cup, okay? You're going to just wrap it over the top like that and you're going to use your rubber band and fasten it on. Very high tech, right? But check it out, here's the most important part. I want you to carefully, and I'd say do this on the table, um, put some water on top there. Do you see my water? Can you see it? Put some water on the top of your thing. I'm gonna balance this very carefully. And so before we go on, before we start using this, because we've completed it, this is the whole thing. I want you to take a second and look at the edges of the water droplet on the plastic. Let me see if I can do it for the camera. So see if you can tell what shape the water is. That is not focusing and now it's pouring. It's perfect, that's fine, I intended that to happen. So see if you can guess what shape the water is. Um, if you think again about these two shapes, would you expect the water to be more convex or concave? If you said convex, that is correct. It is shaped, it's a little bit humped up, it's hard to see in my camera, but it is actually humped up like this. And so it is that property that I would guess this water is going to magnify objects underneath of it. So from here, you're going to insert your nature treasure in the hole you've created carefully, carefully, carefully. And you're then going to look down through the water and it's magically magnified. Oh, great. Hi, Penny. So glad you joined us for the good part. Um, and then it's magnified by the power of science and lenses. Try it at home, please. Uh, but I do recommend also, uh, you're gonna spill the water, like I've already spilled the water. So make sure you're outside when you play with it or somewhere where you can easily clean it up. Thanks very much for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back and I'll have more fun things to tell you about science. Things you can do in your home, things you can do outside. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and remember, science can save the world. See ya.